jobs in Houston, is assistant conductor of the Houston Brass Band, and a good friend of mine. Uh, we will get, please ignore the taps thing at the top. It, this is the ATSSB trombone. And online we'll get one that says ATSSB. The handout and this clinic will both be put online on the ATSSB website. So, Dr. Spitz. Thank you. Yours. Thanks for being here, everybody. I encourage you to ask me questions at any time. What I'm going to do is start with a slow etude. And I'll work on that for maybe 10 minutes or so, and then I'll go to the other etude. If I talk too fast, or if I don't finish a sentence, and you want to hear what that was supposed to be, let me know. Um, there's a couple of titles on this as well, besides the title. Uh, on number seven, it's, it's a measure off. On the first page, it should say measure 15 and 17. And then uh, on number eight, it should say measure 19. I, I got off there a little bit. Anyway, so this is the. The slow legato A2 by Gieppo, A major, and tempo range is 48 to 56. I like to take it about 52 for the dotted quarter. Uh, it's marked Andante Affettuoso, so you may know. Walking speed affectionately, okay? So uh, walking, uh, comfortable speed, but affectionate, affettuoso. Um, this is uh, obviously designed to show your your tone and air support. So let me play it for you first and then we'll go back and discuss it. Measure 
four, for example. So you really got to make sure you let the air sustain. I think of it as a little bit of a crescendo to keep the note alive, to, to build right up into the next note. Now, you see in measure eight and measure nine, there's those staccato marks, but there's a slur over them. As, as wind players, we're not used to seeing that. That's a string marking, a slurred staccato. So that would be going the bow in the same direction, up, up, up. But what we have to do as, as performers is interpret that. And what I say is they're nice long notes with just the slightest bit of separation. <laughs> Accidentals on this piece, you really want to lean into them. 
especially, for example, in measure 16, you have the E sharp to the F sharp, which occurs again in measure 18. It 
etc., etc. If you look at the bottom of the page, then it shows you what it means to invert a chord. I know your teachers know this, but I printed this out just so some of you could do it on your own if you're not aware of what inversions are. So if you take a B flat major chord right there and play it in what position, it means the ones on the bottom. And then you start, you flip the, the low note up on top and it becomes first inversion. Or then you put the, the next note, you flip that up and then you have the fifth on the bottom. So it's really a good thing to do to practice arpeggios because when you get up a piece like this, your mind says, hey, I got this. I play arpeggios all the time. Okay? And some of your scale exercises have those at the end, I'm sure. And so for a, a, an F7 chord, I have all three inverted. And then back to reposition up an octave.
I chose to use alternate positions. They're not essential, but it might be fun. <laughs> Thank you. 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 